listening to the Dang Swamp Rebellion with special guest Tony Malcolm of Electric Sheep Audio. You hear that clicking noise? Does anybody recognize that clicking noise out in listener land? I do. It sounds very, uh, very familiar. Stompbox, boy. Oh, yeah. Stompbox 2021. So we have a very special guest today. A good friend of mine from years long past and continuing onward into the future. We have Mr. Tony Malcolm. Come on, salve, everybody. Oh, you know, Sav Abian. Hey, man, let me play with that thing. Yeah. What you got over there? That's a, a fuzz pedal that I made. <laughs> That's a weird thing to tell a guy. Like, hey, man, let me play with that thing. <laughs> It'd also be a weird thing to tell a guy when you're uh, taking a piss on a urinal. <laughs> <laughs> Look over, like, hey, man, let me uh, handle that. There's only so many things you could. Uh, bring that on and look dude so you built this stomp box yeah yeah it's a um it's a fuzz built off of the Piter heavy spider um well, heavy metal but it's uh the heavy spider is a circuit it's kind of like a, a clone mod it's a fuzz distortion hybrid but yeah it's this new thing i mean tyler knows i uh you know i'm just a tinker really you know i, I everything building guitar cabs guitars pedals uh you name it i just like to like to build craftsman a craftsman yeah there you first go. thoughts there you holding go. this thing is i'm very stoked because i it's very seldom in my life that i actually get a prototype put in my hand i like beta version stuff i really do um second of all this thing is built really well man like the 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 knobs on it are not loose they're very you can tell that your tone control with this is going to be spot on you can just move it barely it doesn't have a whole lot of wiggle room i like that in it um i like the compact design of it um i just like it i like it so what's the name of these pedals so um, uh electric sheep audio is uh you know it's kind of an ode to philip k dick blade runner you know um Actually, Tyler's going to help me out with some graphic work, um, and we're going to go from there. You know, I'm hoping to turn it into a business. Cool. It, you know, um, but it's it's in the very, very early stages. It's in its infancy, you know. Um, I'm still developing my skills with a soldering iron, and uh, I'm not an electrical engineer, so uh, I, I take all my free time. You know, every day I get home from work, I get on a computer, I'm just looking at schematics, watching YouTube videos. Uh, you know, if anybody's interested in this kind of stuff, there's a guy, Tone Geek. It's got a really good, you know, uh, the guy from Wampler, Brian Wampler. He's got a bunch of good videos. Um, Fuzz Lord Effects. So that's basically what got me into it, is watching those guys on YouTube. Awesome. Yeah, man, I could tell that this is a labor of love. And if anything we stand on this show with, it's literally building something from nothing. And that's exactly what you're doing. There is no reason that you need to go to a school to learn this shit anymore. No, absolutely not. You could do it all on your own if you the got the The shell of that pedal is like the shell of our souls. Black? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and hardy. <laughs> but that's what I do like. I, I've, I've had some, um, some, uh, some uh, I guess, economy priced pedals. Mm. And I don't like the cheap feeling ones, man. I don't like the ones that, and that, that's a big deal for me. I always, me and Tyler always talk about this. Uh, the, um, the metal zone uh, from back in the gap. A lot of people recorded on that, and that's one thing I liked about that pedal was it was a, it was a solid feeling pedal. So, uh, the Rending Cuff, I bought a Super Fat Fuck, same thing. Um, it's a hardy pedal. I like that. I don't like a pedal that's wonky feeling and loose. And I mean, you don't want a woman like that. Why would you want your pedal like that? <laughs> Thin plasticky? No. <laughs> Thin plastic and loose. I like it nice and organic. <laughs> that's where I like to keep it. Organic with a black exterior soul. Mm, there we go. I like that. Yeah, man. So uh, tell us a little bit about the art direction that you want to take it in. Uh, Basically like a 70s sci-fi, but also minimalistic. You know... It's hard to explain. You know those old album covers? Kind of like uh, the font style of Sabbath, you know, that 
very clean. But it like but lava lamp around, you know what it's I'm It's got talking? a yeah. serif, but it's all like yeah, yeah, exactly. wavy and shit. Yeah, but also at the same time, like two-tone, flat, and very contrasty. Like a spray paint <laughs> you know? stencil exactly. meets a 70s artwork style. Exactly. Fuck, exactly. man. It's if like a graffitist a, was actually good at what he was doing. <laughs> you know, I got arrested <laughs> for graffiti a long time ago. <laughs> Yeah, uh, me and a friend. I'm not gonna name him because I don't want to put it out there. But his uh, name was Yan Yan, just so y'all know. <laughs> no, that's, a di- that's a different story. No man, 48 counts of simple criminal damage to property. Fuck one me. for every ladder, huh? Uh, one, one for every wall, <laughs> stop sign, <laughs> trash can. Uh, they really put it on you, fuck, dude. Yeah, that's. A, I mean, I'm actually quite embarrassed about it, but you know, now that I'm grown up, it's like whatever. It's a mistake. You know, I was in my early twenties. You know, whatever. Y'all were tagging up. Uh, what was it Thibodeau? Right? Yeah, yeah, downtown Thibodeau. Yeah. The thing is, though, it's like, what else are you gonna do in South LA? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got the Palace Theater, you got the bowling alley that serves uh, five dollar pitches of beer. You know, that, get a tattoo, get somebody pregnant, catch AIDS. Smoke some crack. And if you did that all that day, I mean. Yeah. Then you're ready to start, you I just, know. I just wish we would have had Netflix, up. man. Like, <laughs> it would have changed a lot of we shit. We probably huh? would have stayed home and just sat on the sofa, but Netflix wasn't really a thing. I'm going to look into that to see if now that they have Netflix and Hulu and things of that nature, if the graffiti market is less, <laughs> <laughs> more people are staying home. It's, you know, crime in general, it's got to be lower. It's got to you know? be. It's a, it's a repercussion. I spoke to a, uh, a, a Terrebonne Parish Sheriff's Office deputy that was working uh, in my vicinity recently, and we were talking about weed laws and things of that nature. And uh, that's one thing he said is that uh, since COVID alone, he's like, man, he's like DUIs, uh, you know, that that's one thing that has been on the decrease is DUIs and deaths from drunk driving. That, so in that aspect, I applaud you, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. The unsung hero. Yeah. 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 But it, dude, was... <laughs> Who would have known that COVID would have rose to the, to the occasion and saved us all from these drunks? But seriously, it's time to go. I'll drink man. to that. Yeah, you're right. Dude, I just want to go to a bar and watch a band, man. Like, Yeah, the days of live music, I miss that. God. I miss jam nights, you know. That's The industry has like, got a itch to scratch so bad mm-hmm. with this shit. Imagine the day that it gets lifted and you finally fucking get to go do that outing for it. I will your, shit on the dance floor for your fucking soul, man. <laughs> I mean, that's where we're all come. That's where we all come from. You know, that's mm-hmm. our background. Is but on the other hand, you know, you, you can say that, but I kind of have a new appreciation for it. I hate that. I, I have this podcast in some ways, dude. I really do. I hate that we do this because it's changed me so much to where I see things in a different light. I look at art a different way to where I used to say, you know what? If you're a liberal arts major, you're a piece of shit. Fuck you. You don't deserve to live and all this other crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> but now I kind of look at it different because since COVID, so many musicians, artists, um, and, and and I say artists and I, and I group that in a big, uh, uh, I guess a big, huge umbrella. Artisans. Exactly. So I look at people that are in movie production, that are in audio production, that are in um, you know, just people that, that only supply vector images, right? I feel like that's all grouped in. And now that people are home and they can't get out, it's forcing them to show off what they could do. And I always had this feeling ever since I was a kid. If you have any type of talent and you're not using it, you really don't deserve to have it because people should see what you can do. And now you can see that online all these different platforms, so many people that are these amazing musicians that only could sit in their room and play because they had phobias of getting in front of people or they didn't have drive to get outside of themselves and not people know who they are because they are able to showcase their talent in a different way. Let me ask you this, though. Do you think that since so many people are doing that, they're kind of flooding the market with creativity, does it make it any less unique or any less special that... You in some way, in some ways, yes. I, I will say yes. In some ways, no, because there are the cut aboves out there. Okay, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, there definitely. are the regular hacks that are just kind of sitting around doing their thing, but then there are some that are outstanding, and uh, we've talked about that on the show before. Um, voices and guitarist, um, I, man, I can listen to a song, and um, 
one of my favorite guitarists is Troy Van Leeuwen, Queens of the Stone Age. I know it's Troy Van Leeuwen when I hear him play, and it doesn't have to be with Queens, you know. And that, and it's the same with anything else. There's certain drummers that you know by the their stops, by their their licks, you know it's that drummer, and that's what sets them apart. Is yes, I understand like some of the uniqueness is pulled out of it, and yes, it is flooded, but. The whole thing is, is if you don't like mainstream anything, then take it upon yourself to go find otherwise, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So the mainstream is going to be flooded regardless. That market's screwed. <laughs> you got to think it from this perspective, too. Whenever everyone got a nicer camera on their smartphone, they instantly became Instagram photographers, which put photographers that were actually doing this as a profession, they felt the same way. You know, they felt like it got flooded with all this bullshit that literally someone took 30 seconds to snap a shot when a professional photographer took six hours to get this shot perfect and the instagram photographer will get more likes and equating likes to value is a really stupid way to do it but so many people do it and it sucks but like you said man the cut above will always rise to the top the cream will always rise to the I top. I agree. There's still some real impressive stuff you can do on a cell phone. Like, I, I don't think it's that easy, honestly. I really don't. I mean, yeah, a lot of people have access to it, but you could do some stuff that really stands you, out. You have to have an eye for it, and you right, have to yeah, have a talent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a kid on there recently that was like, hey, check it out. I got this first edition Charizard. I'm going to bend it. And most people could not see it. I can't believe, you know, the masses were like freaking out on TikTok. But you could see the cut. It was a different card. He flipped it over. It was a different card. But you had to really look for the cut. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's like, are you the cut above in that? No, you're not. Because, yeah, you know, it's a it's a cute little prank you're trying to do. But if you want to look at the art side of it, the editing was shit. Because you can find it if you really know what you're looking for. And that's what I'm saying. Like, there's some shit on, online you cannot tell. Yeah, you should have just printed it like well, when I was a kid. I just printed them out on a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, it's, put them on cardstock. Yeah, look, look how good this one is. <laughs> it's in perfect condition. <laughs> I still have one. It's all hand-drawn and shit, like on a piece of index yeah, card. It was really cool. <laughs> Man, I could have traded Mike P, a holographic Charizard for the Game Boy Advance. And you didn't, huh? No. I kind of wish I would have. You because, wish you would have now. Yeah, because they're not really worth that much money. Was it 20 years Neither ago? Neither the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would get more joy out of a Game Boy Advance. Yeah, I mean, a Charizard's fun to look at, but that's about it. Yeah. That's all you could yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. You can't play with it anymore. I mean, what you going to do? You yeah. can, but you're just going to get laughed at. I only ever yeah. had one Pokemon card, and when I threw it at somebody and didn't do anything, I just left it there. I was like, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> It didn't do flamethrower or nothing. <laughs> nothing. Fuck. Dude, and I even yelled like a command and shit. No hydro pump. Yeah, no fucking no. vine whip. No, f- nothing. That's gay. that's gay. Me and Armand, I remember one time he had this little like fireproof safe that had a combination dial on it. And he's like, man, there's a holographic Charizard in this safe. <laughs> and it was like, we're in our mid 20s, whatever. And we're like, dude, it's probably worth some money. Let's get it out. So we went in the yard, we were hitting it with a hammer, an axe, a sledgehammer, like throwing it on the cement. And he's like, dude, I know it's in there. We got to get it open. So after like four hours, we finally barely get this thing over. There was two pennies in, <laughs> in the safe. <laughs> Damn. No Charles Hardcore, man. <laughs> that would be better than if there was one. And whenever you finally opened it, you would have fucked it all up <laughs> from yeah. a hammer. And from throwing it all around on the corners or fucked the uh, shit. That would have been bad. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's uh, I, I I understand that side of it, but you cannot feel what you feel from live music through a video, oh, you know. No and so it's like that. I am ready for bars to open up so we can go do that again. I'm ready for live music. I'm ready for shows. Yeah, I don't even want to drink. I just man, I want to see yeah. some live music. Just want to be in there and fucking feel it again, mm-hmm. man. That's mm-hmm. it's a piece of me that's been like 15 years. Like I've. St- that is a huge part of my life. Okay, yeah. I got a question for both of y'all. Yeah. What venue do you miss the most? Oh, man. Um, I, there's two that come to mind. The first one's the dark room. Oh, dude. <laughs> that's pre, way, way pre-COVID. That's not even what I was thinking about. Oh, <laughs> like that's not dead anymore. Word. Okay. Uh, but that's an excellent answer. <laughs> 
See, the one I was going to say is dead already, too. So. Oh, okay. So okay. We're on the I was page. just going to give out a shout out to the local homie and say, man, I really miss the brick house just because. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do miss the brick house. I feel house. like, oh boy, I got fucked over pretty hard. Fuck you, Martin Falls. I don't care if you hear this, but. Rest in peace, Rip. Yeah. Rip, Rip. Mm-hmm. Rip. But yeah, man, it's I miss the brick house. I miss I miss the brick house because it was just a fun place. I miss you know? the brick house fifteen years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when it was in its prime. But then again, a lot of shit back then was in its prime. I mean, even the even scene in general, City Club yeah, was doing its downtown thing. Homer. Yeah, um, any Mahoney's night was doing good. Yeah. Any fucking night you go out, there's a hundred plus people. But then again, fifteen years ago is the same thing with downtown Thibodeau. You went to the Goose and it was popping, and now it's just a shithole. You know, mm-hmm. right. Or fucking what's the other one? Uh, Trash call. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to you, fuck sticks. But I was I was gonna say uh, Gossa Gossa, man. That's probably one of my favorite spots. Didn't they lose the bar? I saw no an clue. article about that. I saw Twin Peaks there. I don't know. Maybe a year before COVID popped off it was mm-hmm. the last year. So it's been quite a quite a time since I've been there. It's a really cool bar too. One of my favorite places to go see uh, one of the best house bands, though, in New Orleans was at Tropical Isle. Debbie and the Deacons, those motherfuckers, you know, they had been there for like 50 fucking years or something like that, you know. Mm. And uh, he would go do his bumps of coke, the guitar player in the bathroom and come out. And it would still be like all on his face and shit. Yeah. But ripping it, man. You know. Angie! <laughs> Angie! <laughs> fucking tip. Rolling Stone and the shit out of that. Tipitina's. Yeah, Tipitina's there's, great. There's like shit that pops up on my timeline for Facebook that just like makes me super fucking sad. Remember when you were at Tips and it was awesome and you had such a great time, but now you can't anymore. So fuck you. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. I was I was standing under the big banana and I was like, man, I really wish I could be under that big banana again. <laughs> I'll do anything to be hang- under that <laughs> and the banana hanging over my face. <laughs> we had played a gig there. Hey man, let me play with that thing. <laughs> And it was fucking awesome. Like, we played with this really cool soul band, and we played that evening, but literally at 6 a.m. that next morning, we were playing right in front of the Harris Casino for a giant rock and roll marathon thing that people were running around uh, downtown. So we just fucking stayed up. Yeah. So we played our tips gig at 9 and finished. So y'all open for sold out? No. (laughs) Wait, no. <laughs> Thank God. I don't man. remember that. Jo- something Josh Garrett band, maybe? Something uh, like that. It sounds familiar. Yeah. Open for them, and then we stayed till fucking two, then went fuck off until six, four hours, and then we started our gig. I don't know if y'all have ever played a gig at 6 a.m. outside. It sucks. Yeah, dude. Lock in. <laughs> it's Remember in church. <laughs> they made us do dumb shit like that. That is when Christ is awake. That's right. Yeah, fair enough. Will you please come on the back of this 18-wheeler bed and play this song at 3 a.m.? Like, okay. <laughs> Fuck. Love you, Jesus. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what I don't miss, those metal shows. Like, love metal? Too out of shape for that now, man. <laughs> just, oh, you better be spry <laughs> for that just, shit. I don't, yes. want, I don't want young guys pushing me around, you know? <laughs> We're I don't want to hear young metal bands either because <laughs> because when you're young in metal you suck and it takes you a long time to hone in. It takes you a long time to be Scott Marin. Yeah, you know. If I wanted to listen to Crab Core, I would just fucking you know take a <laughs> shit. <laughs> He's getting low, uh, God core Christian get, bands, get, get, yeah, getting low, but it's just we, me and you were into that at one point. <laughs> um, I still like some, but I, I, I'm right there with you, bro. I don't want to see it live, mm-hmm. I'm not interested. It's good to go down memory lane every once in a while, but it's like, and the way shit's automated now, it's literally like one dude on stage with a back, back track, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> it's like. Okay, cool. The man. Kemper or Axe Effects or whatever. Yeah, I, I see through the illusion, I guess, and that sucks. Yeah, I'll, you yell on the stage, hey man, I see your iPod, fucking asshole. Yeah. But, uh, I mean. Last show I went to was okay. right before COVID, and it was Revolution, and it was at, uh, at Sanger, and it was fucking awesome, man. And the thing was, is that when COVID hit, um, Iration was supposed to play. Uh, what's the place that, that really shitty place in Baton Rouge? The Varsity. Mm-hmm. This was play there, and uh, that shut it down. But that was the last live show I went to, um, and then everything was done, and it died, and it it broke my soul a little bit. You know, 
Yeah, we were talking about this earlier, but um, I know Cody's already mentioned in her previous episode, but I just want to second and back him up. Revolution Live, on point, 100%. Can't beat him. You, you can't. It's amazing. I, I don't know. Uh, I Maroon 5 is pretty... <laughs> <laughs> There's a fine line between playing with a MacBook on stage and actually being able to do it and sound exactly like mm-hmm. your album. Right. That's, or better. That's two different things. Or better. I think the only one that I can honestly say did that for me was actually a Pink Floyd tribute band. They sounded yes, fucking pigs. amazing. Pigs, right? Yes. Yeah. I was at that show. I seen them at the varsity, actually. <laughs> I, was, I I saw them at City Club on, during a hurricane. <laughs> it was a hurricane about to come through. You had Zoso? I seen them, too. No, it's not the same. Not Zoso's the Led Zeppelin one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That, it was in my head for some reason. I seen them, and they're a killer. Equally as good. Mm-hmm. Same, it's, same for, me, for me and Pigs, <laughs> same it's, it's the chick that plays that big-ass baritone that's bigger than her. <sighs> she nails it. I mean, yeah. it's it's spot on. And the, and the lead singer... You close your eyes sometimes, and you swear it's Gilmore, man. I know. That's what fucked me up the most. I was like, holy shit, dude. Like, this guy's legit. You're an impersonator, and you sound... You got the fucking chops, too. That's two things. Yeah, and you're no Adam Lambert per- impersonator. and You're a fucking real impersonator. <laughs> I identify as Adam Lambert sometimes. <laughs> no. I'm a non-binary Adam Lambert. <laughs> dude, so the, the pig show... Something happened where their opening act, they were only supposed to play for like 30 minutes because like picks plays for fucking four hours. And there was a, us and them. The other Pink Floyd tribute band was also in Baton Rouge and they both played. Together? No. One opened for the other one. That's what I'm saying. Like they, they played the on the same. Sa- it was the same. The same sh- so it was Dude. us and them and pigs. So like. I guess they decided not to cover the same songs. songs. Yeah. And you had us and them open for pigs. Us and them probably did all the more previous stuff. Um, you know, it would have been funny if they would have just played the same fucking set. The same set. <laughs> I would have been cool with that. It was like, well, I could finally fucking compare who's the best. Pig pigs played more of Gilmore stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. Yeah. Which I'm happy about. And the good thing about those guys, because I was barbacking at the time, is that they, they just like to get shit faced. I mean, hard, too. They they had no qualms about it. Two hours before the show, they're supposed to be in sh- sound check. They don't sound check. Mm-mm. They don't give a shit because they know they're fucking awesome, man. <laughs> they just did it last These week. These cats were down in booze like you would not believe in, like, okay, we're ready. When they were good and shitty, where they were all swaying, they were ready to get on stage. Well, I heard that's what happened to Sid Barrett, except he <laughs> substituted him for sugar cubes. <laughs> then he got diabetes. <laughs> LSD diabetes. <laughs> LSD diabetes. <laughs> I hate the sugar cube. And I started tripping balls. Oh, man. I miss that. God damn. COVID ruined acid, too, I think. It did. It ruined a lot of things. I don't think I'd be able to do that without a mental clarity now. I was like, I'm breathing in all these, you know, death pores, death spores. It would it would probably <laughs> open up a whole new world of hurt because um, Aim Eshmed, who is the former Israeli defense minister, said that the reason why Trump is out of office right now is because he was about to let everybody know that the aliens were real. Hmm. Right. And that uh, we're not ready for it. The aliens want us to know, just so you guys know, <laughs> we are not ready to know that they are real. <laughs> so. Yeah, but the Blink-182 dude's like, he's working on that. <laughs> right? he's, he really do be. What's his yeah. name? <laughs> the but other, just think about that. With not COVID, Travis Barker one. No, no. no Tom one. DeLonge. Yes. Yeah, that guy. DeLonge. Yeah. With all the COVID stuff, UFO aliens, expert. UFOs, all this shit now. Then they found that big, like, huge turd in space that kept accelerating across the galaxy. And now they're all freaking out. The, the Hawaii Observatory found this, like, I guess last week. And it's massive. And they're like, it has to be alien. Um, but, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But all of a sudden, now today, with all of this shit going on, you done played about 4,000 rounds of Fortnite already. All this shit starts going on, and you drop acid. And next thing you know, you turn around, and in Fortnite, it's everything from Animal Crossing about to fuck you with COVID. You know how now that's a serious trip because there's no Animal Crossing crossover into Fortnite. I know that. But there will be. If you're <laughs> fucked up enough, yeah. 
Just saying. You never know. Aliens coming at you in Animal Crossing. Well, you heard it here. Fo- Alien Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Your first Fortnite Animal Crossing and uh, Aliens crossover along with India. Yeah. Yeah. India's still going strong. Um, I would like to thank you very much. I guess that's how they speak. I don't know their language. But they still listening. And also, um, the guy in Canada. He dude. Had, he has a friend. <laughs> Solid numbers coming out of Canada. We're almost to like 13 downloads now. <laughs> in Manitoba, Canada. You think so, if uh, we keep calling out shit where we're not good at, they're yeah, going to listen? 100%. In spite or because, you know, just because they want to hear the name, the universe works this way. Yeah. Like, hey, uh, Kansas City, Utah. Fuck you. Let's go check next week. And they'll they'll listen. That's how it works. Thank you for listening to the Dance Swamp Rebellion. Tune in Saturday for part two with Tony Malcolm of Electric Sheep Audio.